Hey guys, this is Mike. And Scott. From Deep Wood Force of Will. The deepest. And we are here today bringing you guys a lightning round on the Rebirth of Legends set that's coming out at the time this video goes up, probably within like a week, week and a half-ish. Yeah, pre-release is the, this weekend of the 22nd and 23rd, and then the release of the set is uh, 29th and 30th, so end of the month. Yep. So, so not far off. Yep, not far off, and it's a mini set, so we figured what better way to kind of bring this one in than just doing a quick little lightning round for you guys, just to go over each of the cards, give our thoughts on them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm ready. Yep, so let's get started. Starting off with Abel, top two of the Light Palace, paired up with Kane, obviously, again. Uh, this is a one Light Will Human Resonator, 400-400, with Eternal. Um, Eternal's good. Eternal on a one-drop is crazy, and... Uh, oh yeah can't believe we've gotten to this part of the game. Um, he's got an awakening where you rest a recovered card named Kane, top two of the Light Palace you control. Uh, on his enter, you recover all J Resonators you control. So that's a pretty sick effect. That's very strong. Yep, if only he especially, was... Uh... <laughs> especially on a one mana 4-4, four, four, that's pretty good. With yeah. Eternal. The fact that we're finally seeing a 4-4 four, four with Eternal is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. This is just something that you can't remove in the early game with Tempo, so this card is basically just saying to us, hey guys, Tempo's a little dead unless you're just going super hard into the opponent's face. Um, no. Also, being able to just for two mana recover all of Jammer's Nose you control is kind of strong, because we'll see later yeah. on that the cane is a one drop as well. Is he? Yeah. I forget. He is, yeah. Yeah, man. So We'll get to him in a little bit, but yeah, yeah but he is. Good to know. But this card's a very, very strong tempo tool. Uh, I'm not sure if it has like a place in the game right now. The format's been very fast, very control heavy. Tempo hasn't really been too great. So yeah. we'll see how he has to stack up against uh, Six Ages and a bunch of other strong cards coming out in the next set. Yeah, absolutely. But good start. One mana, four, four, eternal. Just good. Yep. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we've got El Dorado Pearl Shine. Pandas! We need panda support. This card gives me hope for <laughs> Wanderer and Eternal formats. Not a lot, but yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, for three Light Will and one Colorless for a panda. He's a 1300-1300, so decent Wrong stats. Um, on entry, you gain a gem of each attribute. Or each uh, each color, each... Yeah. yeah. One uh, of every color gem. Yep. You can banish a Light Gem to destroy target addition. Banish a Fire Gem to deal 500 damage to a player or J Resonator. Banish a Water Gem to draw a card. Banish a Wind Gem to produce one will of any attribute. And Banish Dark Stem Gem to make your opponent discard a car. card. So. I mean, for that amount of cost and stat line with that type of effect, I mean, that's just very strong. Yeah. I mean, seems. He, he kind of seems like he needs all of those in order to like be at that cost level. For like strength wise, otherwise, sure. I mean, but I mean, and the support, see how, like you said, Conqueror and whatnot goes on with him and see where yeah, he fits the fact in, that but... if you're building a Conqueror deck, you now have to actually think about potentially maybe putting wind gems in your deck to make him essentially a free 1300 1300. Oh, yeah, because that's not once per turn, baby. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> that's actually, yeah, for a panda Conqueror deck, that's actually not bad. Yeah, the only thing is that, that, that you know, playing a four drop is tough, but at the same time, it is. he fuels himself, just, he fuels your other cards, yeah. and if you flip Tagris and you get more and more Darkness Gems, you can just discard your opponent's hand at the start of their turn. Yeah, that's also strong. Yeah. It's, it's very utilitarian, you get different ways that you can take a Panda deck and conquer, but we'll see where he falls, yeah. see how it goes. Too expensive, probably, but rent yeah. hell. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, moving on, we've got Grim and Pandora. Uh, two Light Will for a human, for a 600-600. If one more plus 100, plus 100 counters we put on this card, put double that many on it instead. And enter. This turn you can play activated abilities of rules you control that can only be played once per turn, up to twice instead. That's twice. Yeah, so... Oh, this, uh. card, this card just kind of speaks to me as just like... Clearly Oberzuki support, but yeah. it makes me think about other rulers that have activated abilities that can only be used once per turn that would be like actually fully beneficial from this. Right. Like some of the new rulers from the next set that are coming up, they can all 
use this effect like twice, I mean, first thing that comes to mind is Viola, uh, Violet. Yeah. Um, Same card. And it... <laughs> discard two, uh, two card, draw two cards, and discard two cards to get the Atom effects for one specific turn. Is... Recover the stone to play the Grim Pandora, and then you get the Enter effect. It, and you do that. And... It could be very yeah. strong. Yeah. I'm also thinking um, this in. Um... Like, obviously, Obazuki is the big one, but also this one right. in Celesta, just to get the extra explorer at th on that turn. Yeah, just that's also very good. Just a little bit. It's not too bad. Because you can get to a point where, playing that out, you end up get to, like, technically four um, treasures with uh, exploring. Yeah. That's pretty good. Like name counted four of them because yeah. one of them counts. And then as even two now, and then even thinking further back, we also get to think about how this will affect things in Wanderer and Conqueror. Um, oh, I just realized this lets you play the Reflect Refrain ability to sculpt twice. All right, let's move on now. <laughs> all right, cool. Next. <laughs> so that's all I know. Groom Pandora, interesting. Definitely something I want to keep an eye on because these two are. Oh, yeah. uh, very interesting, even outside of their clear application of in Obuzuki. Yeah, two mana six six is a little slow. Yeah, but the effect off of that paired with the right ruler can just make it a very good tempo play. Remember when two mana six sixes were premium stats? Anyway, moving uh, on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next we have Lars Sacred King, uh, light and a colorless with quick cast. Uh, skipped over. Oh, wait, no, Lars is four. Yeah, 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 here we are. Here we are. Yeah, yeah, I can count numbers. I'm <laughs> wrong. Uh, I'm not on the same PowerPoint. <laughs> so he's a human resonator, 500, 1,000, so defensive stat line. Do enjoy that. Um, yeah. If damage we dealt to you, it's dealt to this card instead, so we've got that Alice, um, Light, uh, Servant, Pandora, everything that's... And your with that. Golems yeah. type effect as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, a fun story is Awakening is you can rec rest recover J slash ruler you control to heal an Astro ruler you control. So, we haven't seen that the word heal on yeah. a card since probably Ryula, I think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think there's ever any, been anything else printed. Uh, well, no, the um, the Faith support for Brunhild, but like, yeah. there have been maybe three cards with that <laughs> phrase printed on them. So, it's definitely cool to see that. Um, otherwise, he's kind of a mediocre card overall. Good stats, a nice protection effect, but Light Servant Ragnarok didn't see play in any light decks. Didn't do same that much play in Ragnarok, and I think Lars might be a similar story, unfortunately. Yeah. Game's a little bit too fast for you to try and heal your Astro Rulers. However, in epic stories and oh, singles oh, formats, God. this card's nutty. Well, actually, I mean, with the... Um, in order to heal your ruler, yeah, but, I mean, you have, like, all the Brad support suite that now lets you kill your rulers. True. So, he, he could be useful, but it would be too slow to play him out It would be a very, like, a, it would be a... But he is super very speed. good for controlling the board state and how much damage, especially at quick cast speed. Yep. But, I mean, we have, like, Intimidation for one. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, it's just like... like... I mean, it's cool. You get the stat line. It's nice. If, if you had, like, an Arthur thing where you, like, have to attack him instead of just redirecting yeah. the damage, he'd be a lot better, but you can't yeah. put that on a two-drop. <laughs> Oops. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so, either way, cool card to see. Don't know if it's going to do anything. Probably won't, but... Probably not. It's Lars. It's, uh, he's a human. He's if he human, was maybe, too close human. Like, if he was maybe thrown in with, like, heroes mm. and guidance counters, maybe, but... He's not bad for what he is for exactly. like, outside of like New Frontiers meta that we're thinking yeah. of at the moment. He's a cool card, not a not a yes. good card, but a cool card. He, uh, he's a good card, not a great card, but not a bad card. Yep. He's right in the middle there. Yep. Moving on, the hype card, Lumia Princess. Lumia. <laughs> so, Goodbye, Ouroboros and OTK deck. Goodbye, uh, Darkness having no answers to the Wolfgang FTK. Um, <laughs> Lumia is a light human for one. 
Uh, with quick cast, enter, you gain life equal to the amount of life you lost in any way. Uh, ergo, loss of life, pain of life, reduction. This turn, draw a card, so she's a just, cantrip. Just the draw a card. Well, why? <laughs> she's you a cantrip. You didn't even need to do that. She's a cantrip. <laughs> uh, and then, on top of that, she's a, <laughs> she's an alternate card. So you also have oh, quick cast, remove target resonator with total cost two or less from the game with wings of light and darkness. If this card is awakened, put its <laughs> put its put resonator the card into play as well. And the awakening is just the cost of Lumia being the one light. So if you yeah. pay if you pay one black and to light remove it, something, yeah. white to, to put it in the play afterwards, <sighs> and you draw and then draw a card off yeah, of all of that. Exactly. Yeah. It's just. Like, <laughs> Just pay, pay, too two, much. pay two for a two for one, or pay one for a one for one. Yeah. That's okay. Sure. Fantastic card. Great. Yeah, this card's crazy good. This definitely is deserving of the Marvel Rare slot. I don't know what oh, it's yeah. going into specifically. I don't know if it makes it into the main board for a lot of like these white black control decks. I don't even know if there's gonna be yeah. one technically. But I think um, if anything, might they might just run it as maybe like a one, one two of just in case. Yeah. Um, just to have something as an answer, especially in like like uh, any of the six ages decks. Yep. Um, and another big thing is they that they have two rulers. This so card is also just like play. one of the best sideboard cards I can think of right now. Oh okay. yeah, absolutely. Just completely blank my list in Mujdart. But yeah. Anyway, um, moving on, going into the red cards, we've got Kane, top two of the Light Palace. For uh, one Fire Will, Human Resonator with 400, 400 with Swiftness. Uh, his Awakening, you arrest Abel uh, to destroy all other J slash Resonators. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Play him out, turn one to go fast, deal 400 damage to your opponent, turn one. Great. Later in the game, he just becomes a board wipe with Abel on board, who can't be destroyed. Yeah, he's uh... But you keep two 4-4 four, four creatures on board. And he's got swiftness, so you can poke yeah, 400. Yeah, exactly. After that. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, Only problem is that, obviously, it's like, what deck does he really fit into? Is there yeah. going to be, like, a red-white control-style deck coming up? It's like, possible, but you're also forced to keep one creature on board. Um, you have to keep Abel on board for him to come out with that awakening effect. Yep. Which and if there's... there's any interruption for him coming down, like he goes on the chase yeah. opponent, bounces the able back to hand, and you're just stuck with like. A well, man. no, it's a it's a cost. Oh no, I meant with uh, Kane going on the chase. But... Yeah, but the cost for awakening isn't that paid already. Uh... It's awakening. It's not just a rest. Mmm, so you're right. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That is interesting. So he yeah. still gets the... He's, yeah. he, you lose one creature, it returns to your hand, but you still get to destroy all other J Resonators, so you still wipe the board. That's But, really I mean, there's actually. a lot of... Um, especially with the next set, there's a lot of remove from game cards now, not just destroy. Yep. So... Yeah. I mean, it, they're not bad together, but it's, it's going to be tough to find spots for them. Yep. Again, good card. No idea if it's going to see play. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving on to a card that will not see play. Uh, Kyrix Training Grounds. <laughs> uh, it's a one fire will addition. Uh, whenever J slash Resonator is put into the field under your control, Force 1. Force is back, baby. Force is back. <laughs> You roll a six-sided die, and you put X plus 100 plus 100 counters Ooh. on that resonator, where X is the result of the roll. Yeah, it's... I feel like, if it wasn't necessarily Kyrix Training Ground, and they added the typing um, of, like, Adam for, like, Violet, I feel like it might see play, because then if it's destroyed, you can still use it later on, but as is, it's... It, it, it's a neat idea, but it, it it's not worth it. It's not worthy of a slot where things that are a lot better than it. Yeah. Like, I don't see a world where I pay one fire will to potentially give my guys... Do plus, nothing on, turn, on one turn. Plus 100, plus 100, because I will always roll ones. I will always crit fail on these. Yeah. 
And why is this Kyrx training ground? That guy never rolled dice. That guy just straight hey, hey, yeah. Like, come on. If anything, this probably should have been white for um, oh, what Barzuki? are those two rulers? A yeah. Barzuki or um, yeah. the other white rulers that use Whoever force. They are. Exactly. Bad. <laughs> uh, moving on to somebody less bad. Uh, Magna is our fire uh, Marvel rare. He's a one, two fire will human slash hero uh, for 700 700. You can play him from your moved area and other J resonators you control gain plus 200 plus 400. So, right. kind of board new, buff. Good not stats bad. and a board buff. Not too bad right. playing from moved area. Uh, <laughs> the moved area comes into play very handily with God's Breath. Uh, one fire will for his chance side with quick cast. Put a counter with a name of your choice on a ruler or entity you control. Remove this Remove card from the, the game. game. Okay. I'm going to put a plus um, 10,000, plus 10,000 counter, named plus 10,000, plus 10,000. I'm going to OTK you. Oh my god. That doesn't work. Don't do that. No. Uh, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Please. Please don't. Yep. Um, but yeah, the last time we saw a card say something with like a name of your choice has been like Arthur and Deus Ex Machina yeah. from DBV. Like I don't yeah. think that was ever explored to its fullest potential. I don't know if this is going to follow that same logic. But it's right. a neat card. Um, yeah. I don't really understand what it's trying to do because there aren't that many. I mean, I guess Brad gets knowledge counters in this. Yeah, uh, it, it's weird. Um, Put a counter with the name of your choice. But if you name it a knowledge counter, is it actually a knowledge counter? That one counter? does count. It doesn't count like stats or. If you say like Bane counter, it doesn't give the okay. thing Bane. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Brad is probably the most obvious card that or deck that it could see play, but to yeah. go green red would be like very weird, I yeah. would think, for what you, Brad's trying to do. In um in the eternal forms you can give like magic counters to things like Reflect Refrain, like the um Yeah, the uh, Six Ages, their their knowledge counters. Yeah. Okay. There's a, there's probably yep. a few applications that we're not thinking of that are really, really strong yeah. with this. Uh, it's probably a whole bunch of... Because um, a, a lot of these cards from this half set are... They can be used in New Frontiers for their those decks, but it's also like very much support like here and there for older rulers and older archetypes and whatnot. He is also a hero. He is also a hero. That's a big deal, actually. Oh, he gets guidance counters. That's... Oh, that's, yeah. That's his thing. There we that, go. That makes more sense. Okay. So now thinking in, in that light, that does make sense. You get him from your hand onto the field for zero as a hero. Your other creatures get plus two, plus four. And you could also play him from your removed area to put a... Okay. That's like sort of acceleration for Aria. Okay. Yeah. It's now we're thinking. Yeah. But I, I still think it's probably a little too slow. Yeah. Makes sense. Really solid card, though. I'm really excited to explore the application oh, yeah. like, in its entirety and conquer. Like, I think this is going to be... This, there's going to be something that we're not seeing right now. Oh, absolutely. That's going to be so sick with this guy. It's also cool to see that Magna is God. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, he's a human hero. Uh... God's breath is just kind of like a title, he, I guess. Okay, he's he's got the God's breath. Okay, he's, he's got the God's breath. Anyway, uh, moving on to Shakti, Mercenary Queen. She's a three cost fire, fire, fire for a human, a thousand, thousand with swiftness, precision, and first strike. Oh good old, boy, good old keyword suit. Uh, whenever a J slash resonator dealt damage by this card, this turn is destroyed. Or recover this card. That's pretty good. That's a board clear if you hit the yeah. right scenario. If you don't, then she's not great. Oh, you're tapped down. Let me just... Ba, 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 ba. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's a lot of cool little things you can do with Shakti here. Obviously, the biggest thing is just that she can board clear against a board of yeah. small things. The precision lets it makes it so that she can just keep going, even if the thing blocks. Oh, wait, that's right. The precision, it literally doesn't yeah. matter. You just board clear. No matter what. Okay. Yeah, she works really well against smaller boards. Um, 
The only problem with her is that she's a three drop that doesn't really like win you the game on the spot. She helps you with the board. Yeah. But on turn There's a lot of removal, three mana is too much. There's a lot of cancel spells. If you're yeah. investing three will into a card, it needs to be better than just make your opponent's board in a situation go away. So Yeah. Like she's not bad by any means, but probably no. not great. She would she would probably end up actually seeing play if maybe she had like hero or something like that on her. Yeah. Because then she can like just hey, I'm in the board now. Um but then like remove like a keyword or something like that for that. But like It's hard to remove keywords. As it is does, yeah. yeah, I I know. Uh, as is, I mean, solid draft pick. Solid draft pick. Oh yeah, this card's going to be a bomb in draft. I'm really excited for that. This is going oh, on yeah. cube for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Draft and cube is fantastic. Yep. Uh, and then moving on to the last fire resonator, which is kind of the one that's been the most hyped out of all of them. Yeah. And fire cards, at least, is Sylvia Lilius. Uh, two fire uh, for a Dragonoid 700-700 with swiftness, so she's already got the stats. Lancelot, eat your heart out. Um, yeah, she's got the yeah. uh, Enter, you put two strength counters on J ruler you control. Whenever this card deals damage to your opponent, you can discard a card, remove two strength counters from J rules you control. If you do, recover this card and it gains plus 200 until end of turn. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. But That's a mouthful. It also means that a turn to Sylvia swinging into your opponent and just knocking out all the counters but on yeah, J rules. Yeah, absolutely helps with all of the. Uh... Strength counters is generations really good for her. Conqueror is going to have a field day with her. Yeah, for I feel like decks. she's going to be enough to make Kyrick like a viable deck in Conqueror. Yeah. Like or what was the other fire roller that used strength counters again? Uh, Lilius. Well, uh, right, Lilius. But yeah, no, Kyrick's going to end up having a field day with her even more. Yep. Uh, a lot of people are talking about potential like first turn kills with her if your opponent doesn't answer her on turn one. But then again, who's not answering her on turn one? Uh, There's so many one mana answers that it, it's yeah. just very good aggro card, but it will definitely be a stop. Yep. So good card overall. I think that oh, Sylvia yeah. has uh, has some place in this meta game somewhere. Uh, and in Conqueror or formats yep. that where you're not going to be losing on turn one or turn two, she might be able to get you wins on turn two. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, moving on to the water cards. We're starting off with one of the fan faves, Flute, Shion's Attendant. Uh, for one water, you get a Dragonoid with Quick Cast, 400 attack, 400 defense. And her Awakening, you can rest to recover J Ruler Control. When she enters, you draw X cards, where X is 4 minus the number of cards in your hand. So she refills your hand if you have less than 4 cards in your hand. Yeah, so just draw up to you have 4 cards in your hand. Yep. Uh, not really sure where she fits. Oh, wait. Okay. I mean, especially, like, she's definitely going to end up seeing by a quick cast speed, refill your hand, especially for the... Um, the more aggro, like, 6 age rulers. Yeah. She's going to be very good to have. Uh, you end up throwing out your hand, dealing with whatever board state or whatever, and then she just refills it right back up for uh, you. Do you want to know the one thing that I do want to do with this card? What do you want to do with this card? I want to discard my whole hand, um, play the Dusk Girl, Judgment her, swing once, recover her, awaken her with Awaken Flute, using her, and draw back to four. It's not good. I'm not going to do that, but... No, I want to. But I mean, that's that's not a bad idea for Dust Girl. <laughs> then you're running three colors. Okay. Eh. You play a bunch of Regalia. You got five rules Mori in that deck. <laughs> True. Not four, five. Actually, sorry, five. eight, because you've got the uh, Stone of Six Ages, but either way. Uh, but yeah. Um, I don't see Flute really having a place in the meta right now. I'm not sure where she fits, but she's a good card. I like the implications. Yeah. I feel like if anything, maybe, like I said, in the Six Ages decks, some of the slightly more aggro ones that are trying to kill people use their hand. Yeah. Or, or, actually, Adams, 
Mm. Mm. The, the, the cards that discard your hand, the atoms from your hand, and you use food to refill your hand. I still don't think it's worth it, but you might see some play there. But yeah, it's in a weird spot. Yeah. So, not sure exactly what she's going to do, but I like that item idea a lot, because I know that I want to be playing Violet, and I know that, you know, if you discard your whole hand her for her uh, for her judgment, then you're going to want to refill. So, yeah, I like Flute. Moving on, though. Moving on now. Moving on. Uh, we got Lunia, Master Guide. Uh, oh, yeah. One Water Human, 400-400. Uh, enter. You may search your deck for a treasure and reveal it. Then shuffle the rest of your deck and put that card on top of it. Kiki 2.0. Uh, <laughs> at the end of your turn, if you played an exploration ability this turn, draw a card. Celesta support. That's just fantastic. If you're playing Celesta, you're exploring every single turn. So this is just end of your turn, draw a card with a 400-400 attached to it. On top of it, you end up getting to search for whichever treasure that you want that like you have as a one of remove it from the game so you don't have that deck thinning like you have the deck thinning ability there plus you draw the card it's, it's fantastic absolutely going against Celesta card's so good um, so good again it's it's a slow card but Celesta's already playing slow one drops that right. accelerate her game Celesta's plan. more of like a tempo control ruler anyways so yeah. this just adds to its speed a little bit more yep and it's also a nice option so that people that missed out on their kikis can still play Celeste without being hampered by not having kikis. Correct. Kiki uh, was expensive. Yeah. Moving on, we've got probably my pick for the best card of the set. Yeah. Uh, not the Mary Bell part. The Mary Bell part's cute. Uh, yeah. Sincere Engineer, which is a really nice rhyme. Um... A two cost, five and five for human, for water and one. You can play this card from your removed area. Enter, search your deck for a machine with total cost one or less, and put it into the field, then shuffle your deck. Cool. Fine. Uh, and then heart to heart talk. The chance side, for one void. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Draw a card, yeah, yeah, yeah. then remove this card from the game. I forgot this card cantrips, by the way. I think about its effect, and I just forget that it also just cantrips for you. Hey, replace yourself. Um, this card gains each turn you may pay one less to play the first activate ability of a ruler you control as long as this card is removed from the game if you control two rules only the first ability is affected not the first of both I don't think that really counts too much uh, turns out no. these do stack yep. so that's something interesting to think about but um, yeah. paying one less for the first activate ability not during your turn during either player's turn either so, play. oh yeah that's right either so something turn. like Violet's effect where you can do it on both players turns becomes Instead of paying one, it's free every single turn. It's just cheating mana, especially if you discard the atom that recovers a stone when you... Okay, let me draw a card and respond to your thing for free. <sighs> it's just... <sighs> this card's nuts. Like, this card is absolutely yeah, insane. Like, the implications behind this card, just in this bubble of this next set, is crazy. In the bubble of all of Saga, it's crazy. In the bubble of... Al, like New Frontiers with Alice Origins is crazy and then you start oh, yeah. thinking about Conqueror and Wanderer where you just get to like stack two of these and play a Vlad ability every turn for free it, uh... <laughs> oh my god do you like it? no right? sure hope you do no not Vlad uh, the card's just absolutely one of the best it's, cards it's the insane like, I, absolutely worthy of I've been building decks MR. forgetting the fact that the text draw card is on this card yeah like, I just forgot it, about it that. Does I blocked that out of my head. I didn't think that it was that good. Yeah. It is. So It, it is very good. So keep an eye out for this one. Put these yeah. to the side. These are going to be really strong. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Buy a case just for that card. I basically did. I got so many of these boxes. I know. What did you order? You ordered like four or five? I think I ordered five. Okay. I ordered six. We're good. <laughs> I'm going to have a few of these. <laughs> Uh, so let's move on from here to one of the not good cards, but a card that you're going to play one of in Celeste because you have Looney in the deck. Celeste's yeah. Tremendous Treasure Trove. 
It's tremendous. Lovely alliteration. Gotta appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's a one blue quick cast treasure. Draw a card and then shuffle this card into the zoner's deck as it resolves. Just replaces itself and shuffles itself back okay. in. Whatever. Uh, right. Treat this card in your moved area. It's two treasures with different names. <laughs> there it is. So, you know, it's, uh, it's lost to buffs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, uh, all it really does is just kind of make Celesta bigger on her backside, which I don't know if is going to be viable as much as I think it's going to be. It makes her bigger. It makes her bigger. It makes, what, the dragon yeah, smaller? Yeah, it does make the so dragon cost less. less. That's actually So she's, she's probably going to end up playing that just as yeah, an extra card in there for damage that would help her out. The dragon package is actually going to be really strong. That dragon is a bomb and a half. Yeah. So, this is definitely going to go into like some sort of like, again, Celeste just has the tempo yeah. control kind of play style to her. If she could just, you know, just score some big dragons on the board and just go ham. Yeah. 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 So, card fits that. Doesn't really do much else, just kind of space filler, but a space no. filler that helps Celeste. All right. You use Lunia to grab one. If you don't want this, you grab something else, but yep. more often than not, you're probably grabbing this. Exactly. Play like so. heart to heart talk as well. So I mean, early turns it's just, just a free draw one, yeah. Which isn't uh, that's always good to have. So yep. not bad. It's a fine card. Yeah. And then moving on to the last water card, my your girl, my favorite. Of the your time. girl, <laughs> although severely nerfed. Anyway, um, Valentina, owner of the theater. Uh, three blue for a human, 600, 1,000. Enter. Gain control of all resonators your opponent controls as long as this card is in the field. Power creep the four drop Valentina. I'm going to steal your things. Yep. And then it's going to get removed by every single removal spell that is in this format. Yep. <laughs> GG. Unfortunately. Can't protect itself. Yep, exactly. Unfortunately, an enter effect that needs it to stay in the board in order to make sure that... For three it, mana is not going to. And you can't even get around it with the removal effect to, like, stop oh. the leaves the field trigger, because there's no leaves the field trigger, so... Yeah. Unfortunately, probably way too slow for this format. Obviously in, like, Eternal formats, or Epic Stories, or Genesis, this card's cute. I'm really excited for this thing in there. Yeah. This card's a bomb in cube, too. This card is oh, ridiculous in cube. It's... Even it takes. If you're playing against multiple people, you steal all their cards. Like, every player's resonators. It's not target opponent. It's your opponent. <laughs> Jesus. I, that is... Yeah. Okay. Just, just take them. Yep. They're yours but, now. Um, not too slow. Not great. But, yep. Yep. cool card. <laughs> Moving on to the best color. Uh, we start off with Faricia, Lady yep. in Anoraktia. It's a two wind quick cast human for 600 700. Mm -hmm. uh, you pay zero to give target J Resonator control barrier until end of turn. You play that once per turn. Nice. Just, just, just free barrier. Oh, your target. Let me just play this. In. No. Okay. And then you pay green and discard a wind card to deal 1,000 damage to target J slash Resonator. Okay. Yeah. That's. Uh that's strong. That's I'm alright with effect. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Faricia is very strong. That's that's one way to nerf Faricia's previous version. Now it costs oh to God. discard a card. Imagine making things cost mana. Ooh. Anyway, still, Faricia's still would definitely, I would still definitely say that she probably sees a little bit of play as a yeah. few of. I do like the fact that it's only once per turn, but it's not like during your opponent's yep. turn, during your turn, so you can just kind of be flexible with it. And the fact that she also comes to quick cast means that she's like a flexible, like, comes down, protects the thing, next turn protects herself. There's just a lot of cool things. That oh, I don't have the cancel to cancel your destruction card. All right. Faricia, barrier. You can't target. You're dead. Did like, you just imply the green player? Could definitely see it. Did you just imply a green player didn't have a cancel? Scott, come on. I know. You're right. <laughs> but, anyway, cool card. But in case it happened. Mm, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we go to Melfi, Traveling Sorceress. Uh, one green, one colorless elf resonator. 200-200 with quick cast. 
while you play this card, treat it also as a chant. Oh, Enter. Boy. Produce two wills and any combination of attributes and draw a card. Oh boy, boy. well, so there's field day. <sighs> Remember Varang Laws? This is him now. Feel old yet? This is, her. <laughs> this is her now. Oh my god, there's so much crazy stuff that this card does. Um, obviously, Welser I mean, is the first it... thing that comes to mind. Uh, I, we've seen John Paul talking about Lycaon combos with this card. Yeah. Um, if you're playing Feetsing and another Six Sage, if you're going second, you can tap Feetsing to pay the one for this card, use her Energize to play the Melfi. Produce green and yeah. red, green and black. Play the Research Institute, and it has the same wording as Old Gruz Ballista, where you just get the stone without having to sack one. But yeah, Melfi is literally just like makes your it can make your deck just like thirty six cards at its worst, and it can combo off really hard at it, its best. Yeah, it's just a good combo card. Yeah. So two two stat line is. Trash. Definitely weak. It's trash. But but that doesn't matter if you're going ham. It's a combo piece. And a chump blocker. Yeah, that's true. For free. Yeah. Moving Literally. on to the next one. We've got... The other <laughs> candidate for the best card in the set. <laughs> Good old Perseus Secret. Perseus. Oh boy. Uh, it's a one green, one colorless wanderer. 700, 700. Ooh. She's got quick cast, of course, because what green card doesn't yep. have quick cast nowadays? Uh, Doesn't enter. have quick cast is not yeah. good enough. Yeah. Enter. Search your deck for Resonator with total cost X or less and put it into the field. Where X is the number of times you've already played a card named Prissy's Big Show in this game. Then shuffle your deck. Well, here's the fun part. You can start the game off, play Magna, and just play her and get the healing gimmick for nothing. True. But you're not doing that, because uh, Prince's no. Big Show is a one-will chant with quick cast. You force C2, and then you put it back no. into your hand as it resolves. So you yeah. just kind of, you know, do the thing, play the that. You don't lose a card. You and stack then, the top two cards of your deck. And then if you're playing well, so you play it ten times, because you recover the stone. And then when Prissy comes down... You pull out the uh, Avenger of, Aza of uh, Amadeus from the oh, deck. Oh, that's right. That's the way to cheat it in. Yeah, that's one way to cheat it in. You can cheat in a lot of things. You can cheat in a newer Boros combo with this as a more expensive uh, resistance, technically. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of really, really strong implications. The fact that this... Like, do you remember Sacrificial Altar? This is him now. I feel old yet. Uh, <laughs> or instead of... Extra Resonator with total cost extra less put it into the field. You can grab... What is its name? Terminus? Yeah, you can grab Terminus with this thing, too. You can grab a lot Stack of things. Cards for your deck. Yeah. Although, for that deck, it's not free. Yeah. Unfortunately. So, but the amount of things this card can do is nuts. Like, ridiculous I mean, flexibility. Two mana, seven, seven. With quick cast. That grabs you something else. And has a you can grab You can combat. grab Melfi off of this. Oh yeah. Grab Melfi, it becomes free. You got a chump blocker. You can are you what, you draw a card off of Or you Melfi do the real well? play and you play Prissy into Prissy into Prissy into Prissy into Sigurd into Schrodinger into Schrodinger into Schrodinger into Schrodinger into Schrodinger, into, Schrodinger <laughs> into Institute. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, you can <laughs> absolutely do that as well. <laughs> that is not what you want to do. <laughs> I mean, if you're a savage, you can do that. True. But yeah, the the amount of yeah. things you can do with Percy are nuts. This card is insane. Yep. Moving on. The last green card is for uh, Rizard, Adaraxi's leading doctor. Significantly less insane, but also yeah. kind of <laughs> sick. Uh, one wi one wind and two colorless for a 900-900 human with quick cast. Quick, quick cast. Wow. Um, wow. Whenever a resonate and another resonate control is put to a graveyard in the field, put it into its owner's hand. Good. And cards in your opponent's graveyard lose all abilities. Okay. So no more Sigurd. 
Uh, no more response... figure, no more, no more remnant. Yep. Just in general. In, in response to him come in response to something you have getting attacked or getting destroyed, you flush in the Rizard, just immediately get it back to hand, and then you have the Rizard sticking on board. There's a lot of cool things that he does. Um, I don't know if he fits into any decks currently. No, he's probably he's just slow so at the moment. Though. Oh yeah. No, he's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, definitely like definitely want to find a place for him. But just overall, I think his main purpose is going to be somewhere in like the limited formats or singleton formats where he's just like a total bomb to drop on oh, yeah. any kind of interactive board. Yeah, pretty and much. I think what, we have one more wind card, which is Yggdrasil Top Taurus Destination. Yep. Which is just the most hilarious name. Um, one wind for an addition that when it enters you draw a card. And true. While we play this card, treat it also as a chant. Treat this card also it's as a magic stone while checking the number of magic stones you control for an effect or of a seal ability you seal. control. Treat this card also as a resonator while checking the number of resonators you control by an effect you control. It just it just counts as Not, everything. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I know exactly what that. Okay. Yeah. Confused myself. Yeah. Because like, check the number of resonators you control. What does that imply? And I'm like, oh wait, right, never in dragon. Yeah. Um, but I mean, well, sir, it's free. Play it as a champ. Turn one. Draw a card for free. Yep. Uh, draw a card. Recover stone. Yeah. Brad for the seal cool. abilities. Brad for the seal abilities, but yeah. that I think is a little too slow for Brad. Yep. Um, um, obviously, it helps out with that cancel spell, and it also helps out with the stone yep. that just got revealed, <clears throat> which is really nice. True. Yep. That does. So, I don't know. This card seems... It's probably not going to see play because there's a lot of other cards that do more. Yeah. Um, like, it's a card that's supposed to be come. a lot of... It, it seems like a glue card that doesn't really do a lot on its own. Yeah. So. Cool card, though. I hope somebody oh, yeah. breaks it. Beautiful art. Oh, yeah. This card's really cool. Yeah. Just a tiny little city under a gigantic tree. Yeah. It's a great tourist destination, man. <laughs> Moving on to darkness, we start off with Abdul Al Hazard, the possessed. Um, one darkness for a 300 300. First time we've seen like grim cluster level stats on a card in a long time. Um, yeah. He's a human Cthulhu resonator. Uh, at the end of your turn, you destroy all J slash resonators with attack 200 or less. Pretty cool card. Okay. Pretty cool effect. Awakening for darkness, darkness one. Enter, remove all counters from J resonators your opponent controls. Okay. Then oh, Jay Resonators, your right. opponent controls gain minus 800, minus 800 until end of turn. Damn. That's that's a lot. Also, the fact that, that he's is. a Cthulhu means that Wolfgang from... Uh, Can pay the Awakening for free. Yeah. Okay. This card's so, now, so now we're kind of seeing like that Wolfgang in like this context becoming, instead of like an OTK deck, it's more of like a mid-rangey type of deck. Yep. Um, Which is, I think, how they initially probably wanted him to be before they're just like, hey, we yeah. should also just, you know, this is a high-risk high reward. Let's just let them win the game on turn one. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, he seems really cool. The fact that he destroys J Resonators and gives minus eight, minus eight to J Resonators, adding J Rulers into that makes him much more interesting than he would have been if he had just yeah. been something that affects Resonators. Plus, the removing all the counters is going to be important for, like, the next set. Yeah. Um, at, at four cost, probably not seeing that much play. But, I mean, if you end up playing a deck that ends up having negative stat effects, like um, the new Wolf Gang that we've seen recently, yep. I can see him being played as well. Yeah, there's a lot Nick, of cool stuff. Nick there's stats that's under 200 attack, and he automatically kills them. Late also, game, he if you're playing against like a like a tempo based token deck, even something like somebody just dropping a bunch of Melfi's on board, this kills right. them. Like, yeah, sure, you can wipes do that the board. Too. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff that he does. I don't know if he's going to be good enough to see play, but probably card, not. Like, a card design like this is always a nice little space to explore. 
especially if the format slows down. Yeah. Moving on, we've got Alvarez, True Demon Castle. Uh, one Darkness Edition. Enter, put 200, put two 200, 200 Darkness Vampire Resonator tokens with flying into the field. Why? And non Darkness J Resonators gain minus 200, minus 200. Okay. Now tokens. we can kind of see um, Abdul maybe seeing play in combination with this. Yep. Negative or, stat. Or even against this. Yeah, even against this as well. It works in that sense. I just realized, is this thing just like a big CGI castle? Is it it's a floating castle. It looks like CGI. It could just be really good painting, but anyway. Yeah. By the way, it's a floating castle in the sky. Yeah. That's why the vamp is, that's why the vampire resonators are flying. True. <laughs> Yeah, we've seen effects similar to this on stuff like, mm. obviously we're going to talk about Alice's World of Madness, where you get like the, yep. all resonators lose, uh, gain minus, one, minus 200, minus 200. This only affects non-darkness ones. And it also comes with the added benefit of 400, 400 flying worth of bodies, which grand scheme of things isn't really that great, but it's interesting at least. They're chump blockers, and at yeah. least gives you something, and two of them at that. Yeah, exactly, um, so... Like is a new as card. A, yeah. Yeah. As a one mana addition, the, the effect isn't that bad. Like I can absolutely see it seeing play with in combination with like Abdul. Yep. But once again, probably probably a little bit too slow for what a lot of the decks are trying to do in like the, the top meta that we're thinking of right now, so Yeah. Just a very cool card. Oh yeah. Uh moving on to the other coolest card of the set, uh, Dracula, Reborn Vampire. For yeah. one darkness, we get a 400-400 vampire with flying and barrier light. Um, plus 100, plus 100 counters on this card do not cease to exist if it is put from the field into a graveyard or from a graveyard into the field. So remove them from the game. Yeah. And when this card is put into a graveyard from the field, at the next end of turn, put this card into the field with two additional plus 100, plus 100 counters on it. So this thing does not die. Yeah. He gets reborn. It's Dracula. He keeps coming back. Mm-hmm. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. <laughs> Enough talk. Have at you. Comes back. Have at thee. Uh, and the <laughs> second part of him is the Jewel of Darkness, which is one darkness and six. <laughs> um... Okay. It's got Remnant, and you can pay one less to play this card from your graveyard for each plus 100, plus 100 counter on it. Crazy good. Uh, and the effect is destroy all dark J slash resonates your opponent controls. Flat out. Damn. <laughs> That's so, pretty good. So it takes a little bit to get it going. Obviously, you've got to sink at least like a turn or two into it, and you have to kill off your own Dracula to use it from the grave, which if you're playing Mikage you can right. do really easily and also get him the plus 100, plus 100 counters because he's still a viable target when you banish him. Yeah. I'll let, I'll let you read that, Scott. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Because I was just trying to think, like, how do you end up and realizing while it's in the grave, while it has the plus 100, plus 100 counters, you can just use its... Um, spell effect instead of bringing him back. Yep. I was like, how do you get him to stick in the grave? And I'm just like, wait a second, he's already in the grave. Yeah. Right. So you kind of have to finagle something with him there, Decide, which is really cool. Do you want him to come back as a creature and get more plus one, plus one counters? Yeah, he can just or kind of win the game on his do own. do you want to just wipe their board? Yeah. So. And he keeps getting bigger, so he's definitely a card that will see play. Moving from the game, also returning to hand resets the counters too, so that's another thing that you can think about. We've got a lot of really good return True. to hand effects, so. I don't know, and there's a lot of good have... ways to just kind of get around him, but at the same time he's so, yeah. so You've got strong. Morning Angel, you've got Exorcist Mage. So, like, you definitely will see play to force your opponent to use those cards, but and you also have so many Good cards card. that remove things from the game, from the grave, from the game. Yep. Void, Violet just kind of gets that. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, is a very cool card. Uh, it card forces that... an answer out of you. Out yeah, of exactly. Mind. It's going to be a card I'm going to experiment with beyond belief. Yep. 
Moving on to our last Darkness card, it's Freylet, Dark Huntress. Uh, 700, 700 uh, for Darkness, Darkness for a Dark Elf. We still have those, apparently. Yeah. Um, she's got Swiftness and Bane. Tap effect, target J slash Renewer Gains, minus 600, minus 600 until end of turn. Or Revenge. <laughs> Tap, destroy target J slash Resonator. So this card is... Strong very, card. Very often just going to be a two for one. Despite yeah. already being like Lancelot Plus. Yeah. Two uh, mana, go fast. I do like the they fact. Block it. I do yeah. like the fact that they gave her abilities the tap effect, so you have so you have to obviously decide remove your attack in order to use that effect. So she's kind of an aggressive but it's card, but also effect. yeah, she's like kind of aggressive but not super aggressive. She's both aggressive and not at the same time. Yeah, which is really cool. She's Maybe aggressive so. with control built in. Yeah, she reminds me a lot of. Like, obviously, it's going to say she was given the uh, bow by Pierre, and she reminds me of him having mm. swiftness and control effects. Yeah. Yep. So, I don't know. Absolutely. Really cool card. Uh, probably not something you're investing too well into in the current format, but I think there's, no. there's something here, though. I think that she has just enough going for her where people will experiment. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean, a two mana darkness uh, creature with swiftness, like just that is nice to have. If only she was around when March of the Dead was a thing, right? Yeah. Mm. Conqueror Field Day. Player in Freyla. <laughs> oh yeah. Keep getting her back. Another dark elf. Yeah, you just keep getting her back. Yep. It's a better. Um... Freyla. Oh god. It, is, uh, it also is a better Freyla, like well, the red Freyla. Yeah. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the card. It's nice. a tap, banish it, deal six, gain six. Oh, Shade. Shade, yeah. Just a better Shade. Yeah. Imagine if Shade had Bane. Then you destroy anything oh with this effect. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Last but certainly not least... Ragnarok's so, Fiery Stone, baby. So, Black gets drafted. Only four cards instead of five, but... Yeah, they're pretty high quality, at least. But um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Nah, but Ragnarok's Fiery Stone, I'm glad we're getting this. Um, he needed something like this. If you don't control Ragnarok, it ends the field rested. Great. You're putting it right. Ragnarok. Can be used outside of it. Uh, calling a Magic Stone does not cause your rulers to rest. That's interesting for the Six Ages. And also for Ragnarok being able to use the six age support without really having to worry about tapping yep. himself down. Yeah. And then you could just tap it to produce one will of any attribute. I've heard some other stories, like obviously produce one will of any attribute for Ragnarok is great. But like I've heard people yep. talking about trying to fit this into a Grus Ballesta deck, so you can just sack it with Grus Ballesta to get it off the top of the deck, and it's already rested anyway. Yeah. So That's yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, there's a lot of cute it, stuff you can it, do with this card. Oh yeah, could be used in anything, which is nice. Doesn't have to be used in Ragnarok, because you still get the produce one more than anything. Yep. Keep your tap effects um, for your rulers after before uh, when when you call for stone, you keep them for their tap effects for later on for the six ages. It's just a good utility stone. It's just it's the thing that Ragnarok really desperately needed because he oh, is not yeah. in a good spot. So, yeah. having this and uh, Magic Stone of the Six Ages means that you just have eight stones that let you tap him for effects. Produce, yeah, produce anything. Yeah. So, I don't know, this is really cool to me, honestly. Yeah. So, well, with that, that's all of it. That's every single card. That's, all 25 yeah. from the set. Not that many, but... Card quality Very overall is good, though. Card quality yeah, is really good. Doesn't feel like there's any wasted space this time around, which is really nice to see. No, there's always going to be something that can be used. And something like this, like, the small packs, it's, like, small boxes, obviously you're paying for the good card quality. I hope that this, they do more of these things in the future. Oh, yeah. Because this set this is, This compared like, to Vingolf. Like, some of the Vingolfs were... Just, 
not good. This compared to Ghost in the Shell. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> the only problem is this set does not have truck. And I feel like I got a little no, bit let nothing. down by that. Oh, you could search truck, truck out with Prisia. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, that about wraps it up. Yeah. Hope you guys are excited for the set as much as we are. Uh, Very excited. Let us know what you think about these cards, if you think that there's anything we overlooked on any of them. And as always, this has been Mike. And Scott. Deep Wood Force Will, signing out. See ya.